guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with another video for W Plus 9. Today we are going to be making a one layer card with a little bit of embossing and uh, watercolor with Distress Oxides. So I'm using Kind Soul, I am using the wood planks, and I am using the welcome wreaths for my sentiment. Um, I'm working on Canson watercolor paper. You can totally tell how much I love this stamp just by looking at it. It is well used. Very quickly, I just wanted to kind of pop in here and let you guys know that W Plus 9 is having a sale. It's the end of summer sale. Um, everything in the store is on sale. So there will be a link below in the description for you to head over there if you are watching on YouTube. I am treating my paper with my embossing bag and then I'm going to ink up my stamp with some Versamark ink since I am going to be doing some just white embossing. After I stamp this down, normally you wouldn't be able to see it because Versamark is a clear ink. Yeah, clear. But you're going to be able to see it because the last time I used it, apparently I didn't clean it great. And uh, I get a little bit of a gray outline. Um, judge me if you must. I'm fine with it. I know that the embossing powder, because it's opaque, um, I will cover it. And so it's no big deal. So I'm going to sprinkle some of that on. And then I'm going to um, clean up any spots where I got some that I didn't want. Um, sometimes it happens a lot. Um, if I do the CPR method, which is what I did and what I typically do with bigger stamps, um, it's okay, no big deal. I'm just going to go in with a dry paintbrush and clean that up um, because it was really on kind of like the outside edges, not so much where my flowers were. And then the whole time I'm doing this, I have my uh, heat gun heating up so that way it's minimal contact with the paper and it reduces my chances of warping. Once that is done, um, I went ahead and cut a mask for this. Uh, and that's what you see here, so that I could stamp the um, planks in the background. Now there's two different stamps in this set. One of them is more um, just a regular wood grain and one of them is boards. The one I'm using is the boards and I'm using warm wool ink from W plus nine. I'm being a lazy stamper. I know I should probably stand up. I didn't, then I moved the thing and I was like, yeah, you gotta stand up and give this thing good pressure. Which once I did, the, it went, you know, right where it was supposed to go. Mask is no big deal. Just going to move my magnets over. And then this time I'm going to flip it. So the part that was on the bottom will now be on the top. Just to give me some variation. Um, so it doesn't look like, you know, three of the same stamp stamped right next to each other. And this took me three, three boards to cover the entire background. Um, this is an A2 size card. So four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, so that's not too bad and they're super easy to line up. It's just a straight line. <laughs> so that's easy. Um, I just love things like textures and things in the background. I just think it makes the card more interesting, but I don't really like busy. Uh, so things like wood grain or text or things like that are, um, nice for me to have. Um, just because I, I really don't like a, a ton of busy patterns. So I'm going to ink this up one last time and stamp this down uh, and then we'll do the big reveal which will not look like any sort of reveal whatsoever because all I have right now is my embossing powder in the background. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I really meant that one. Did you see that? I really I really gave it a good go. So here I'm going to remove the mask. There's that white embossing powder like we talked about and then I used um, well, I didn't really know what I wanted to use, which typically I show you my Distress Ink or Distress Oxide colors. Um, I just smushed this down. This is the uh, Alta New Stamping Mat, which is made of silicone, so it kind of serves the same purpose as a craft mat. I'm using a number eight round brush to put a bunch of water in the background. And then, like I said, I didn't really know what colors I wanted to use. Originally, I was looking for Walnut Stain, but I couldn't really find it. Um, so brushed corduroy is always a favorite of mine. But I had never used it in the oxides, which I know you're going to think is funny. But uh, that I, well, you probably won't because you're also a crafter. So you'll understand that I purchased a supply that I didn't open. Yeah, that happened. It happens a lot. Um, so here, just again, just the clean water. You don't have to worry about the W plus 9 inks running. They are waterproof. So I don't have to worry about my... Um, my board's going anywhere. And so when I picked up the brush corduroy, I was like, this is really yellow, like super yellow. Um, and the warm wool is a cool brown, um, which means it 
is more toward the gray side. So this being so warm looks crazy. So I'm just gonna use this as just kind of like a base color and then I'm gonna go back to my box of inks and start digging. Again, originally looking for walnut stain, which is almost like a perfect kind of match for that warm wool color. But what I came up with the second time I dug into the box was uh, gathered twigs, which is more of a neutral brown. So it's not quite as warm as like a vintage photo, um, but it is not quite as cool as a, as a walnut stain. So I thought, okay, well, I got this. Let's, let's try this and see how this goes. Uh, it was better, substantially better. Um, but still not as cool as I wanted it. Now, in hindsight, I don't regret any of these steps because I got a really cool um, kind of like wood stained finish in the background because I had all of this color variation going on. Um, so that was pretty cool. I did not intend on doing that. That was just happy accident, which, you know, sometimes happens in crafting. So then the third time I went back to the box, I did find the walnut stain. It was at the very bottom of one of my piles. Um, and then this is really kind of the color that I was looking for. Um, and it's gonna give me the most color variation because it is the darkest one. I make sure that I get this one right up next to my uh, white embossing because um, I knew that I was going to later add a drop shadow and that this would kind of help set the flowers apart from the background by having that dark uh, portion there. But just by nature, Distress Oxides are not as dark or as rich as Distress Inks because they have that pigment property. They dry kind of chalky, um, which is really pretty. And I love using them with my Copic markers. Love, 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 because they blend together seamlessly. So this is all dry now. You can see that super cool kind of finish I got. And then these are all of the colors that I'm going to use for my bouquet. Yes, I know nine colors seems very extreme. Uh, however, there's two different types of flowers in here and lots of leaves. So I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this. Um, this first way is my preferred way. Uh, the Normally you would not work next to two areas that are wet, but the embossing kind of acts like a dam. So it separates it and keeps the water in, the, in each one of those little petals. Um, so I'm going to add to the base where I want it to be darkest, my lightest color, which in this case is fossilized amber. So I'm going to add that where the darkest color is going to be. I'm just going to drop it in, not really spread it out, drop it in, move on. Then I'm going to add in the next darkest color, which in this case is ripe persimmon. And again, just adding that right over top of um, the yellow, not spreading it out, just leaving it. Um, I did, for some of them, go back and pick up a little more so that the color would be more concentrated. The last color is um, Festive Berries, because when I Googled, um, these are anemones, when I Googled um, anemones, uh, the bright red ones showed up. Now mine are a little bit more on the orange side, but I'm totally cool with that. Um, I wanted to do a fall card, even though I'm so not ready for fall to be here. Um, but then after I drop in those colors, I get my brush wet with just clean water and then drop that at the tips of the petals and let that like kind of swoosh back to where the color is and carry it. I did, again, like I said, go back in with some darker colors just to make sure that I was getting kind of the dimension that I wanted. For flower number two, I'm gonna do it the opposite way. So I'm still gonna fill the whole flower in with water. Um, and it's going to depend on what kind of look that you want, how much water you use. If you want just like a, a the color to just crazy flow wherever you want it to go, then you're going to put down a lot of water. If you want a little bit more control, you're going to use a little bit of water. I just put down water until it was, you know, pretty much covered. Some of them might have been a little bubbled up, honestly, um, but I'm fine with it. Like I was, I was good with the way it was going. So I started with the festive berries, then I went to the right persimmon and dropped it next to it. Instead of on top of it, I dropped it next to it. And then um, the last color is the, the fossilized amber. They give you two different looks. Um, one of them is a little bit more, I guess a little, <laughs> it sounds so weird to say a little bit more watercolory. But the first way that we did it where we add just the clean water gives the flower an opportunity to kind of have some blank areas and fade out to white, which I really do enjoy. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and speed it up um, for the rest of the coloring. I did all of them the first way um, because like I said that's my preferred method but you may like the way the other one looks and that is also totally cool. Um, so you just do whatever kind of floats your boat. So just remember you're putting down clean water, dropping in the color, um, however which way you choose to do it either from your lightest color and then darker consecutively on top of that or darkest color and then your lighter colors consecutively next to that whichever way you choose um, or something completely different maybe you have a technique that you already enjoy doing then do that um, so for a little bit of story time here we're going to talk about animals and insects that's what we're going to talk about because you know um, Kelly's Critter Cottage I just have a lot I have a lot of those things side note about the centers um, so when I googled it the red anemones have like a super dark blackish purple center so I use dusty Concord and chip sapphire um, which is also what I used for the petunias um, and then the lightest color in that is seedless preserves uh, this is going to not be dark enough for those centers once they dry, so I will go back and kind of adjust that, um, but for right now, that's what's in there. Anywho, back to the critters. So, first things first, let's catch up on these fish, right? So, the last time I talked to you, SpongeBob had just died, and then the next morning, Bubbles bit it. Um, I figured Bubbles was going to be the next one to go because when we fed them, um, Bubbles did not eat. So I don't, Bubbles was on a suicide mission, I guess. Um, but he didn't eat and then he was dead the next morning. Currently, now that was three days ago. Currently, Jeff and Nike are still with us. They are still surviving. Um, Jeff is in fact thriving. He is getting bigger. I think probably because he's being fed off the souls of all the fish that he murdered before him. Um, so I talked to Peanut about, because there's a 14 day guarantee. So as these fish are dying, I'm not spending any money on them. Let's just be clear about that. Somebody had said that, like you're spending a fortune in fish. I am not spending a fortune in fish because I am cheap. Um, so if I could not have just replaced them for free, I would not have replaced them for sure. hundred percent would not have done it. But because there's a 14 day guarantee, I was basically just swapping out dead. I would take in a dead fish body. I would come home with a live fish. That's how that was working. Um, but so I talked to Peanut after Bubbles died and I was like, buddy, can we just, can we let the fish thing go? Like, can we just let it go? Like we got two fish. If they live, cool. If they don't, cool. I mean, I know that sounds terrible, but like, I'm just, I'm over it. Um, and he said, yeah, that was fine. So we're, we're a two fish family now. And if I, it's, I can't imagine it's going to be Jeff. Jeff's probably going to live till he's in college. And I'm going to be like, take Jeffrey Dahmer with you when you go. And then he'll die. That will be my luck. Like Nathan will take him to college and then he'll die. Yep. Uh-huh. That's going to happen. I can see it now. Um, but anywho, so then the next issue, well, not issue, I guess the next pet um, you guys have heard me talk before that I was looking for a puppy. I have been looking for um, a younger dog uh, to kind of round out our family um, it, for for Peanut and for Molly to have a playmate. And so I've been looking for quite some time. There was, I told you before, Charlie that, that did not work out. I had spoke to that same rescue um, about another dog that they had, but that dog would not be available until the end of August. And to be quite honest, like the communication just wasn't great. It was four hours away from me. Um, and so I started looking a little bit closer to home. I take Molly to a rescue near me um, because it's a, it's a half rescue, which is how it started. But then it's also like a doggy daycare kennel groomer. Um, and so um, take Molly there to get some exercise. And then when we went on vacation, that's where I, I boarded her. Um, and so they had a dog that was up for adoption. His name was Mercury. Now, Peanut had told me he wanted a boy dog, which is I'm totally down with. Um, he told me that he wanted a boy dog. And so they had one. His name was Mercury. He was about one and a half years old. And then when I talked to um, the rescue about it, um, they were like, yeah, we just don't think his personality is a good fit for Molly which is fair enough. They've spent time with my dog and that dog. I totally believe them. You know what I mean? They, they're the ones spending the time with them. 
So then there was another one. I don't watch Game of Thrones, but apparently all these puppies were named after Game of Thrones. And um, so mom is Sansa. And then the puppies that were left were um, Tyrion, Arya, and I, something with a D. I can't remember um, what it was. But if you watch Game of Thrones, you probably know what it is. But anywho... So we decided that we were going to go out and um, meet these puppies. Well, when I had sent the email, she was like, he's got, um, we were going to look at Tyrion. He was the only boy dog. Um, they're like, he's got a, you know, a bunch of people who've applied for him. And I'm like, I bet he has. He's totally adorable and everybody wants puppies. Now, I wanted a dog that was a little bit older, but I'm down to do the puppy thing. A, because then you know who they've been raised by. It's you. Um, and then you also have them longer, you know, because puppies unfortunately don't live as long, um, as people, though I honestly cannot even fathom the concept of my Molly passing away. And so we won't talk about that. Um, so anywho, um, she did send me an email back and a couple of days later and she was like, Hey, I think he's actually going to be available. I'm like, that's totally cool. So we kind of, um, go you know email back and forth here you can see how like light those dried i want them to be darker so i mixed uh mixed mixed i don't even i don't even know anybody named mitch i went to a high school with a guy named mitch anyway i mixed the aged mahogany with a little bit of the chip sapphire to make it a little bit darker now everything's dry 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 and i'm gonna go in and just add a little bit of definition with just two different colors of um my copic markers you want to be really careful about the embossing, though, because this will color your embossing powder. People have asked me in the past if I had any issues coloring over Distress Inks or Distress Oxides with my Copics, and I never have, though I hear people say that it can possibly clog your tip. That's never been an issue for me. They're your supplies. Make your own choices. Okay, so um, we make an appointment to... Um, go out and look at this puppy which is about an hour away from me so eric and i load peanut in the car and then we're on our way we get to um the place peanut slept the whole way he was so sleepy my poor baby um but so we get to their house and they have so many dogs just so so many dogs um and nathan out of the mouth of babes right so we walk in the door and nathan's like mommy it stinks in here and i was like buddy don't sh no that's rude um and it's because they're very loving people who you know foster a lot of dogs now the dogs were clearly very well taken care of but if you own animals you know i mean my like when i go to bed at night molly's been laying on my bed all night it smells like molly in my bedroom it just is what it is um it's the plight of being a, a dog owner i'm not going to follow her around with a bottle of febreze i don't care that much um here drop shadow so I always add my drop shadow as if my light source is in the top right hand corner. It's just habit. Um, so all of my shadows will be in the bottom left. I am not getting up right up against the embossing. There's a little bit of a gap because I don't want to color it brown. Um, but this is really going to help separate it from that background and make it look more dimensional. After I do this darker color, I'm going to go back in with a lighter color and spread that out. So anywho, we get there to the dog place. And um, we look at the puppies, we're playing with the puppies, and Nathan points at this little black and white one and goes, I want that one. And I was like, hmm, that one's a girl, and you want a boy. So, and he was like, yep, yeah, don't care, I want that one. And I was like, are you sure? And he was like, yep, yeah, I'm sure. So that was Aria, and she was totally adorable. She was super chill, um, which is great because Molly's personality is super chill. Here I decided I wanted to add a little bit of shine to the background, so I'm using gold perfect pearls, um, and they bind with water, so I'm just going to spatter those on. But so we've been kind of going through the process. We're at the last stage um, on Friday. We have a home visit. And if that goes well, we will be adding a new member to our family. We will not be keeping that name um, because I am not a fan. Also, because Nathan wants to name the dog, which I don't really blame him. It's his first puppy. Um, so if she ends up coming home with us to, to be a forever family, her name will be Emma. So we will have Molly and Emma. Um, so excited about that. I have no idea what a home visit involves for a dog as I've never had one. Um, but I am hoping that whatever it is that they're looking for, I've got it <laughs> because, um, I don't know. I've never really been through the process. So I stamped my sentiment and white, uh, pigment ink 
from W plus 9 and then I am going to heat set that with white embossing powder just like I did before. The reason I didn't do the clear is because I felt like um, the white pigment would help the white stand out a little more. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, and then so I'm just going to heat set that and then after that's done um, I'm going to add a drop shadow to this as well because I felt like the sentiment blended in just a little bit too much into the background. Um, and again I'm not going to get right up next to it because I don't want to color my sentiment brown. I don't think that would be super pretty. Um, but just this little teeny tiny thing that you can do just by adding the shadow really helps it kind of pop forward and makes it much more legible. Um, so yeah, Emma, I will keep you updated on that. We're not going to get to the insect story because here we're almost done, but I will tell you about that in my next video. Don't you worry. Uh, the last thing that I am going to do is I'm just going to add some um, clear glitter here to the flowers because I love all things glittery. And then that's it. That is the entire card. So thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.